Hi, so I did a video, a time lapse video, showing um, me using my rigid header loom to do a three chef, four chef pattern, sorry. Uh, it was too quick and I'm sorry about that. So this is my attempt to slow that down to show you guys what I've been doing. The first thing to say is I'm not an expert in any stretch of the imagination, so please bear with me. I may not be the best at explaining things, but you know, ask questions and I'm sure I'll try and answer as best I can. The first thing to say is that I am using a 32 inch rigid heddle loom by Ashford. I've got the double heddle block on and I've got the third heddle that just hangs free. I have threaded it using a straight draw um, which means that the first warp thread goes through a hole and then in one heddle and then the next heddle it goes through the next hole and then the next heddle it goes through the next hole and then there's one just in the slot. It's the standard threading pattern for two heddles. The only difference is instead of having two warp threads that just go through a slot you take the, another one through a hole in the third. There's loads of stuff out there on the internet about how to thread that pattern and, and uh, I can put together a little diagram if that would help people but I'm not going to go through that now because the loom is warped. Um, but su suffice to say it's a straight draw. Um, I have started using the pedals as A, B and C because the, having one, two, three heddles and one, two, three, four shafts and <laughs> I'm just doing my, my, my tiny mind in. So I've labelled my heddles A, B and C and when I draw up my weaving draft I've also called them A, B and C. I'll be referring to them that way in this just because that's what's easiest for me and that's what's in my brain but you may be able to translate it differently. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to move the camera up right now. Um, yeah, okay. Sorry about the jiggling. So, can you see this? Oh yes, let's put some light on. Um, these are the three heddles. They're in position. And you m can see, moving the camera over that way. No, that's rubbish. Hang on, I'm just going to put the camera down and I'll put some light on. Proceedings. Okay, so here, oh, why might, well, how, why might I don't know if you see that, there we go. The heddle closest to the back beam is heddle A, then heddle B, and then heddle C. Okay. There we go. Can you see that? One, two, three. Then A moves freely. The other thing to say is that I have these little magnets on my heddles, which I've stuck on with super glue. Um, and that was when I was using string heddles um, to hold up the, the dowel. But to be honest, it didn't really work very well. But now it's quite handy for keeping those two in position with one another. Although they don't quite meet. Um, which is why the observant of the mountain dew will have noticed that this heddle is on backwards. Right. Apologies, this is making me feel dizzy. That's probably the best angle. Okay. So the pattern repeat is 16 pecs and it's comprised of eight picks going one way in the zigzag and then another eight picks going the other way in the zigzag and then that repeats. Um, I've already done the first four picks of the first way, so I'm on um, pick number five in my draft, which is here, and that's because, I'm showing you this because that repeats, it's a pattern that repeats twice and then it changes to go, put, put, make the diagonal go the other way, if that makes sense. So um, it would be a very long video if I showed you all 16 picks. It's pretty long already, pretty long already. Okay. Here we go. So, um, the first position you want your heddles to be in are B and C down, in the down position. Your third heddle 
is handy. So if you just sort of slide it back up onto the back beam and that way it's not really affecting any of the threads. I use a boat shuttle um, and this is a marine silk, which is silk and some sea cell, I think. Um, it's a very, very <laughs> slippy warp. So you may see me get in a bit of a tangle when it just like all spins off the spindle, but um, we'll, we'll try it. So, and I also may launch this shuttle at the tripod. <laughs> so that's the first trick throw. I've got some floating sleevages here, which help um, catch the help catch because obviously you're not always going to have the last thread being raised. So that's why this bit is I'm beating quite tight because of the the weave I'm trying to achieve, but obviously you don't need to. And then put that heddle into the rest position, into the front rest position. Bring your heddle A down and you want to put that into the down position. And that's where these little magnets I've got come in place because they help hold it down. to put heddles B and C into the up position. Heddle, the third heddle just goes back to your back beam again. It's just floating there. And across. You always beat with the front heddle with heddle C. And then the next position is A and B in the up position. So this one just goes into rest. It shouldn't be affecting your warp threads any. Catch it there. Keep down. And then um, that's that repeat done. So now we're going to change the direction of the, um, of the zigzag. And to do that, you want to have heddles A and B down. And your, oh, yeah, I've just lost the magnet. <laughs> and your <laughs> front heddle is just in the rest position. So pedal C is in the rest position. Um, I'm going to just hold this pedal A, the back pedal down to help make the shed. There we go. That's the most awkward shed, this one, because this has a tendency to pop up. You can kind of flick it in. Or like me, have something to hold on, but my ingenious hack that I showed you has just failed on the video so um okay there we go so the threads are now going the other way then it's C and B down See, this is what I was talking about, about the this very sh slippy cotton, a uh, slippy silk, winding itself around the spindle and getting stuck. Yes, see, not an expert. Have to try and release that. Uh. Yeah. 
you go and make a cup of tea or something while this is going on, I reckon. Oh, disaster averted. It's very pretty. There we go. One, two, three. And then it's A and B up. B and C up and then the same pattern again so it's A and B down and you have to hold it down. Just give it a little push. B and C down. Neutral. Um, so, camera jiggling again. That's the whole pattern repeat essentially. <laughs> Sorry, I'll use this thing. Um, that's the whole pattern repeat. If you can see, there's the pattern. Oh, lots of shadows. So, you can see that the threads go one way in a zigzag and then the other way in a zigzag. And it starts, this is where it starts, so that would be heddles, B and C down, A and B down, B and C up, A and B up. And then that would repeat, and then it goes the other way. So you start with A and B down and then B and C, so yeah A and B down and then B and C down then A and B up and then B and C up and then that repeats again. I hope that makes sense, it's a bit sort of confusing, I'm confused by it all. If you have any questions please post them in the comments, I will try and help. I, like I said, I don't really know that much, I'm just having a go. So thanks so much for watching this very long video. I hope it was helpful to you. Oh.